the taps on the window. Has anyone ever heard a knock on their window? I mean sure, most of you would probably say yes. It inevitably happens for some reason or another. Perhaps a tree limb hitting it in a storm, an animal accidentally flying into it, or just weird neighborhood children playing pranks on you. My story is far more chilling than that. I honestly can't find the best way to put this into words, but I'll do my best. I don't see names as an important thing, not for something like this. It's better no one tries to contact me or find out who I'm exactly. All you need to know is that I'm now 30 years old. I can tell you where I live or did live when it all started it was a rural countryside with forests surrounding our old wooden house. I lived with my grandparents at the time whom raised me up until I was 15. They're pretty much my entire world and always will be. My parents died when I was very young and I was never told the full story. They always said they didn't want to talk about it. I figured it was hard on them to relay the passing of their son and daughter-in-law. It was, from what I heard from other relatives, a car crash that happened two months after my birth. When my grandparents learned of this they were very quick to adopt me as their own, to which I'm thankful for. One night about a week after turning 15, I was laying in bed half asleep when I heard a very subtle knock on my bedroom window. I'm a very seclusive person by nature, and I don't know why. I've always had my door shut and locked, the window tightly locked down, and thick blinds covering it from the inside. The knock did startle me at first, but then I remembered a tree limb that typically dangles close to my window. I figured that it simply got blown about by the wind and reached far enough to scrape the window. I thought nothing much of it that night and slept pretty well. The next morning my grandparents called me down for breakfast and I rushed down to some eggs, a piece of toast with grape jelly and a piece of chocolate fudge, one of my favorite treats. I never mentioned the knocks to my grandparents. After finishing my breakfast, I did the normal routine. I cleaned up, got on the bus, went to school, came home, played games, and then got back into bed. The norm for most kids, I'm certain. The next night, same thing. Knocks. This time more than once, and a bit louder. This admittedly freaked me out. Two nights in a row? The thing about this night is there was no wind outside, not the slightest whiff. For several months, the same thing happened almost every single night. At this point it did have me slightly on edge as it really isn't a normal phenomenon. After that night, nothing further happened for at least 4 days. On the 4th day, things took a sudden turn for the horrific. I once again heard the knocks on my window, but this time, it wasn't just knocks. I heard something literally clawing the window, almost as if it was trying to break inside. This caused me to panic and duck under the covers, but I soon realized that is stupid. If this thing gets into the house it will most certainly notice the figure under the covers. I remembered my bed is rather tall, heavy, and has thick sheets and covers that dangle over every side to the floor. I quietly and quickly made my way under the bed and hid. I stayed down there for what felt like several minutes on end, waiting for something to happen. Nothing did. I heard nothing but the very subtle creaking of the house. Finally, something broke the silence. The window in my room broke with a loud shattering sound, glass spraying all over my bed. I very nearly screamed at the sudden shock, but I covered my mouth before anything could escape. Silence, once again. Moments later, I heard the thud of a foot slam into the wood, and I heard something mumbling. I could not tell what was being said, but I cold swore it was saying my name over and over and over. At this point it was literally a repeating record. But as it vanished down the hallway, I heard something else. Another thud in my room, as the same thing happened again. Only this time, the voice was far deeper. It sounded very masculine compared to the last one, but it paid the bed no mind as it also scuttled out of the room. I stayed under my bed all night, too afraid to come out. By the time morning came around the house was as silent as a field on a moonless night. I very slowly crept out from under the bed and stood up, looking at my window and the damage. It was alarming, but not as alarming as the massive human-shaped footprints. I didn't know how to respond, my mouth hung in pure horror as I saw the scale of them, and the fact they had claws on them to- Judging by the scale of the footprint the height of the creatures would be at least 10 feet tall. I slowly made my way out of my room, following the tracks. I paused for a second, and looked up. The trail ended at my grandparents' bedroom. 
My heart froze with a deep dread. I forced myself to continue forward and made it to the doorway. What I saw next is stabbed into my memories even to this day 15 years later. My grandparents' heads were severed clean from their necks and placed on the bed. Their mouths hung wide and their eyes wider in pure horror as blood was piled on the bed from them bleeding out. Their bodies were nowhere to be found. I screamed at the top of my lungs, bolted down the stairs, ran a full mile all the way to our nearest neighbor's house, and banged on the door as hard and fast as I could, bawling my eyes out in the process. Angelia, or neighborhood chicken razor opened the door and I fell into her arms sobbing like an 8 year old to which she just held me in confusion, but also trying to comfort me. Calm down, sweetie. Tell Angelia what happened. She said hushed, trying to calm me down. H heads. I stutter screamed out, pointing to my house. She comforted me and got us both into her car and drove us back to my house. I begged her to just drive away and not go in there. She refused to listen. She ran inside, and not long. After I heard a scream from her to a she rushed back out, got in the car, and called the police, explaining over the phone what she saw. Within 3 minutes 4 police cars and a SWAT team were at the house. I remember them trying to question me what happened, but I could not speak to save my life. I kept bawling my eyes out in Angelia's arms, the cops understandingly trying to keep me calm as well as the SWAT team tore the house apart. After a while I told them what happened, and one of the SWAT members looked at me and said, you need to come with us. Now, I was literally pulled by my arm by the same SWAT member, and Angelia screaming, trying to stop them from taking me as I reached out to her crying. I remember nothing of that day, I was sedated, as soon as I was in the SWAT car, but before I was I heard gunshots, and someone dying. I woke up several days later in a military installation, surrounded by armed troops, and an older, high-ranking officer. What's your name, son? She said, to which I responded, redacted why. To which she looked me square in the eyes and told me, you're being hunted by something. We have you safely secured here in our installation. No. I screamed, I want to go home. To which she spoke, calming me down instantly somehow. Son, your grandparents are dead, and no one remains in your old neighborhood to protect you. You're under my protection now. I promise you, nothing is gonna happen to you. From that day forward I lived a sheltered, spoiled life. For another 5 years, I almost completely forgot what happened. I was now 20 years old, and I remembered what happened. During this time I was taught how to fight, and given rights to bear arms at any time for my protection. It was now December 3rd, and I had turned in after a long day's work. Tap, tap, tap. My eyes shot wide open, and I slowly looked towards my window, which was also covered from the inside in a house, made entirely of metal and concrete. I quickly got up, grabbed my gun, and ran to my adoptive mother's room, to find the window broken, and yet another bleeding head on the bed, just like 5 years ago. I didn't scream this time, but I decided to do something drastic. I hid all evidence she had even died, changed my name and alias, moved away and completely went off radar. I adopted a new life, everyone believing I was a secret agent or something along those lines. On the side, I did some research and looked into the death of my own parents. I found a lead that pointed to it being not a car crash, but something far sinister. They went missing in the woods without a trace and were never seen again while on a camping trip, 30 miles from my grandparents' house. This made my blood run cold, as I looked deeper into the classified files. Things like Skinwalker were mentioned numerous times, and things got so dark about them, that I eventually stopped looking. I know if I kept it up the government would learn of me intruding on highly classified documents. I'm now 30 years old, I have a wife and 3 kids and we live in another country. I speak another language now entirely, and we have lived comfortably for at least 4 years now. But something happened last night, that gives me pause. The ever so tender taps on my bedroom window. Thank you for watching. Like the video and leave a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel, follow on Twitter, and join the Discord and subreddit, so you never miss a new video.